now the Bible creates a system that we call the five free system. Before even somebody will make a visa or a permit for you to move to a country, let the person show you a document that shows that he himself or he herself has been there before. With the Dubai citizens themselves, how are they usually like? Are they are they welcoming? Are they, are they accepting of foreigners? Are they accepting of black people? A, a, a phone must not be seen with a local person. Local person in any form of sexual harassment. So welcome guys. Today we have a very exciting episode for you. We are at Dells Avenue Company Limited. So many people have been asking us how they can work and travel outside their countries legitimately and safely. So we hear all these stories of people who go and work outside their country and they are not treated well. We also hear stories, we see all these videos of girls who have gone to Dubai to work and they have to come back to Ghana and so lot of issues. But today I have, a, I have a guest with me who is going to show you how you can travel and work outside and have no issues with it. So stay tuned. This video is proudly sponsored by Shark's Hive. Are you worried about the rising rate of insecurity in the country? Then worry not, Shark's Hive has got you. Shark's Hive is running a CCTV camera promotion that will allow you to view your business or home even when you are not in the country. They are full package for four cameras, cost only 2,500 Ghana CDs. Yes, only 2,500 Ghana CDs. And this is a one week promotion that they are running. You can reach Shark's Hive on 054 730 8302. 054 730 8302. So, Mr. Dell. Yes, sir. Welcome to Daily News Hive. Thank you, sir. All right. So, can you introduce yourself to the viewers? All right. Uh, my name is Richard Delali Dell Agomo. Uh, I'm a travel consultant, at the same time, an immigration expert. I own the company Dallas Avenue Company Limited. What we do at Dallas Avenue, we are into travels, we are into tourism, we are into international labor recruitment. We do a little bit of estating, and then we also make sure that we put travel aspects on the forefront of every traveler that is living the country. Wow. That is what we call the travel management. So wow. we also manage travel as well. That's a lot. Sure. You guys do a lot. Sure, sure. So let's jump straight. So. You were saying that you help people work outside their country. Which yeah. countries do you help people to work from, work in? All right, we, we do, when it comes to the issue about work in the foreign land, there are three ways that you can work in the foreign land. When you look at the western side of America, that comprises Canada, America, uh, some part of Mexico, Brazil, and other stuff. Okay. They will create what we call the SI system. SI system, yes. Okay. One will ask what is the SI system. Well, we will go deep into that. Now we just want to we'll, we'll enter the SI, the PI, all the systems. We will go inside. Don't okay. worry. I just want the names of the countries right now. Sure. So currently we are operating with Canada. We are Canada. doing work in Canada. Okay. We are also doing work in Poland. Poland. We are also doing work in UK and also doing work in Dubai. Dubai. Currently. Okay. So that's four countries. Sure. For now. Okay. Because of the restriction as far as COVID nineteen is concerned. Mm, okay. So let's start from Dubai. Dubai is the one that we hear a lot of more treatment stories from. So as I know that you also travel there yourself. Sure. So what has been your experience in Dubai itself, not working but just traveling there? How do you say about the people? How is the culture like? Right. You know, most often when it comes to work in the United Arab Emirates, this is a country that comprises almost about five states. We have okay. what we call the Saudi Arabia, we have what we call the Qatar, we have what we call the Jordan, we have what we call the Kajistan, the Kujistan, all comprises to form what we call the United Arab Emirates. Okay. Now, Dubai is one of them. Now, when you go to Dubai, it's also another state on itself, which capital city is the Abu Dhabi that we normally call for. Now, Dubai operates a system that we call fine free system. Now, what do you mean by fine free system? It means getting the requirement of documents to work in Dubai would not be difficult as getting a document to work with in the US. Okay. You understand? That is the difference between the two of them. Now, Dubai is that once you have your money and you are eligible to live in my country, I can give you a residence permit. So that's provided, called fine free yes, system. Provided you have a company that is willing to hire you. Okay. You understand? Now, most of the issues that we hear, about 80% of them are possibly true. Why are they true? 
It depends on whoever manages your travel for you. There are some people you meet them at the roadside who doesn't even know what travel is, but that person calls himself an agent. <laughs> Definitely, he doesn't own a passport, left alone getting the visa to move to Dubai. He has never so even left Accra before. Exactly. So when you get to Dubai and you face a challenge, how does that person help you? Mm. And so I sometimes advise clients that come to the office that before even somebody will make a visa or a permit for you to move to a country, let the person show you a document that shows that he himself or he herself has been there before. Exactly. Because they said experience is always the best teacher. So if the person has been there, he knows what he's selling for you. But if the person has not been there, the person just exaggerating that, oh, they said this happened in Dubai, this happened. This. So first of all, you need to know and be sure if the one taking you there has been there before and can manage your travel affairs for you. You understand? Now, situations that most people find in Dubai is about the fine thing I was talking about. You can use one month visa to enter to Dubai. You can use three months visa to enter Dubai. And so provided if, uh, if somebody moves from Ghana here to Dubai with a one month visa, he gets to Dubai without a job. Mm. And the one month expired. Already the person has entered what we call the overstay period. Now the system in Dubai says that if you overstay, we are not going to sack you. You can live as long as you want to live in Dubai. But there's a fine that comes with overstay. And so until you pay that money, you are not coming back to your home country. Wow. Yes. And so when you enter and you overstay for the very first day, you start counting from 100 dirham. And so imagine if you have overstayed for two months, three months, four months. <laughs> it's huge money. Mm. Therefore, it makes the client or applicant become stranded. I the person doesn't know his left or his right. So this is one of the problems Ghanaians or especially wow. Africans face when they get to Dubai. Okay, so when it comes to the people of Dubai themselves, how do they relate to foreigners? Are they welcoming? Is there racism in Dubai? What language is spoken there? Uh, basically, I would say the people of Dubai or Emirates are very welcoming because of the huge amount of money they make as far as tourism is concerned. Okay. And so they are able to speak about 90% of them speaks English. Okay. And it's hardly will you see the locals. And mostly they have a system that protects the locals. So the locals don't work. It will interest you that the locals don't work. No, most of them don't work. So how do they make money? That is the issue. The system says that if I want to register a company in Dubai, which Devils Avenue, we have a newly registered company in Dubai called the Agomo Travels. Oh, that's great. Now, before I register the Agomo Travels, the Dubai government is telling you that you need a local to guarantee for you. Wow. And as that matter, you're supposed to pay the local not less than 10,000 dirham. Wow. And that 10,000 dirham in Ghana money is already about 20,000 Ghana CD. Oh. So imagine if a local help five people to register a company a month, how much is he making? A hundred thousand wow. Ghana CD. That's just a nice business. So normally they don't work. And so is it paid? How, how are they paid? Is it one time payment? No! And the government states it's that if you want to have a company, the local that is coming in owns 49% of the company and you own 51%. Wow. Yes. So I don't know every Free money year, plus shares. Yes. That is what they do to protect their citizens. So it's hardly will you see a local in Dubai working. Mm. Yes, hardly will you see them. Even if you look at their police and their military, it's made of what Egyptians and <laughs> Filipinos and those people. You understand? So they have a system that protects them. So they are welcoming. Because he knows that once I receive you and give you that kind of gesture, I'm going to make money from you. So wow. there's no way they are going to have those kind of racism and those kind of things. No, 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 no. They don't do that at all. I see. They don't do that at all. And their, their system is working. Then why is it that we see these videos of um, ladies being more treated by some uh, Dubai women and then they have to run out of their house and some of them they say they don't have passports their passports have been taken by the people they were working with how does that situation arise all right um first of all let me tackle the passport issue okay you understand the Dubai immigration system states that if I employ you I need to have your documents with me okay so in case of any emergency I will be held responsible if the document is missing so the employer is responsible to, to keep your document legally with. responsible yes Okay. What you are supposed to be given is what we call the Emirates ID. If you can see my hair, this is what we call the Emirates ID. Okay, if you can show it to the camera. This ID is what guarantees you to work okay. in Dubai. It serves as everything for you. We call it the Emirates ID. Okay. So once you enter into the company and the company does this ID for you, they keep your passport, your traveling passport. So it's like a Ghana card. It's like a Ghana card. Okay. Understand? Why? We had an instance where, you know, our fellow Nigerians and other countries, they still, because when you go to the company, there's something we call the bed space. Bed space. Bed space. Okay. Because accommodation in Dubai is very expensive. So for instance, if they get one accommodation or one room for you, you can be four or five people living in the room. 
but the best place is just a big bigger than the student mattress you use just something small okay so you see somebody at the top somebody at the down so the assumption that a nigerian can see your passport remove it and fix their picture there is very high it happens a lot it happens a lot wow. because they only use their picture to identify oh, because they, yeah. they, they know more about the arabic they normally don't check the name they check your facial expression mm. they give you access so that is why they become mandatory that the employer has to do what keep, keep your document your document why can't you give the employer a photocopy of your documents normally it, it really doesn't work that way because the system says that if i'm working with you i must be on probation for six months Okay. Uh -huh. So after the probation, you want to work with me, then you sign a contract with me. And trust me, the labor law is very working. So sometimes when I hear the issues about people that have been more treated, have been this and been this, sometimes our people that go there, excuse me, say, a lot of them don't ask opinions, they don't do investigations, they don't mm. ask for the details before they go there. I'm to Dubai and I'm to Exactly. There was a case I handled about two months ago when I was coming to Ghana. I have to reschedule my flight because it's a fellow Ghanaian I need to help. And trust me, the girls are the people that are even giving me customers now. They are giving me clients now. Wow. What happens? There is this norm in Dubai that they call agent fee. Mm. The agent fee is that if I am the one securing the job for you, because I know where the work is, I need to take you money before I'll take you there. Okay. That's what they call the agent fee. We have tried to try to cancel that agent fee because it is somebody who is moved from a country to somebody's country to go and work. Then you are charging agent fee thousand five, two thousand dollars, which is almost about thirty three thousand Ghana CD. Oh. Just you going to show the person where the work is. Mm -hmm. But we tried, it didn't work because somebody says that when I came, they took mine. So now I also take some to replace what they have taken for me. Mm -hmm. This is the issue you are facing. Now, when they take you to the house, some of them pass through your back to your your madam or your mister to take money from them. Oh, okay. Understand? So once they pay your agent, it's more or less like you have been sold to them. Oh, okay. So the the, 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 the the man or the woman also says that ah, I've paid your agent about three thousand, four thousand dollars before he gives you to me. Why do you come to my house and become lazy? So how much is that in Ghana cities? It's almost about six thousand, seven thousand Ghana cities. Wow. Oh. It's a huge money. You understand? So you must be very careful whoever is giving you the job and whoever is taking you to the place. Mm. And let me tell you something. Ninety-nine point nine percent Ghanaians in Dubai don't speak the truth. Ninety-nine point nine. He knows that wherever you are going, there is an issue there. But because he's eager to take the agent fee, he'll push you there. But once he takes the agent fee and take it to work, he's done with his job. He has taken the money. Hmm. You understand? So you must make details investigation before you go to somebody's house. Now, the problem too over there, one of the difficulties we are facing there is that there is a warning, especially the United Arab Emirates, well, Saudi Arabia and co, that a, 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 a foreigner must not be seen with a local person. A foreigner must not be seen with a local people. person in any form of sexual harassment. Okay. You understand? Now, what happens? If I am in your house and I'm working for you, you realize I have money. I've also gone there to go and look for money. Mm -hmm. So, if your boss proposed to you, <laughs> you accept it. You see how the thing goes. Yeah. And when your madam gets you in the trap, it is mandatory. They stone you to death or they beat you to death. So, those they, the, the things they will stone you to death. That's they beat them because I will not sit in my house for you to come and take my husband. So, you can be stoned to death for taking someone's oh, husband. Oh, it happens a lot. Even sometimes, because the house you are in, Nobody knows you don't come out. Mm -hmm. If it is two years contract you have, you're in the house for two years. But the wow. two years expire, you come back to your home country. Now the agent who is sending you there, he also doesn't know the house you are working in. Okay. Even if we have millions of Ghanaians in Dubai or Saudi or any of the Gulf states, and they don't know the house you are in, if you are killed in the house, nobody knows. Wow. So automatically they bury you without anybody's conscience. So, but have you ever experienced a Ghanaian taking a, a foreigner's husband before? Oh, that's happened. That is the videos you guys have been seeing in town. Any place we see that they say they, uh, an Arab, they are beating the Ghanaian ladies. These are the things they do. I see. And the men too, you know, with the things that they sleep, they force and force and force and force. You get yourself into trouble. And when they see the money too. That is it. Oh. That is it. So that's why some of these issues come that's about. Some of issues come out. A lot. It comes a lot. But with Dubai recently because the way they are changing their system and trying to make sure that they, they make free entries to everybody it hardly will you hear such kind of things from there okay. and the, the, the Indians and rather does not even treat the locals well so there are a lot of Indians in Dubai seriously you know India mostly are into immigration okay so Canada US they are there plenty because of the immigration stuff okay. and they don't treat the locals well I see you understand but if you have a local a very good local. What would they treat you all? And surprisingly, do you know the house helped him pay a lot? 
So it attracts a lot of people to go in there. So from your company angle, what do you do to make sure that Ghanaians that go there for the house in particular are not more treated, don't have this kind of, What do you do to ensure that Ghanaians are safe? All right. For my company, we have made a restriction for any lady who wants to move from Ghana to Dubai to go and do house up. Okay. Why? Because most often you live in the house with your landlord or your landlady who happens to be your master or your madam. Mm. When something happens, until I go there to look for you, the madam might not tell me that this, ha this and this has happened. I don't know one thing about our Ghanaian ladies too. Immediately they get there, they start listening to issues from other people. Mm. So even if they find difficulties, instead of them to come back to you, for you to find a way of resolving the issue, they rather run away. <laughs> so if you go to the house there, you will not find them. Wow. So mostly the ladies that move from here to Dubai, what do they do is that they're cleaning job. Okay. They're cleaning job. All the supermarket works that we allow them to do what to do. So for those ones, you don't leave with the employer? No. There's something we call company's accommodation. Okay. And their company's accommodation, you're not the only person living there. Mm. There are a lot of people living there. Therefore, when something is happening, somebody can alert somebody. Okay. So with the house opting, unless, of course, I have a good working relationship with your madam or your mister before. Okay. Other than that, we don't even get ourselves involved in the house meeting. Exactly. I think that's even better. Sure. That way, you don't have any sure, issues. Mostly we don't even get ourselves involved. That's even much better. So let's let's change the direction. Let's to something people have been asking for. Sure. I think one of the number one questions people want to know is what food would they eat when they're in Dubai? Like I said from the onset, that because of the way they welcome foreigners, you get any stuff of food you want to eat in Dubai. Okay. There is this popular restaurant in Dubai called Sankofa. It is a local restaurant. Oh, you okay. Ghanaian stooping every day to go and eat. You can find your fufu and everything. You there. can get your rice, you can get your chips, everything is there. But is it expensive? Well, because they are paying their currency. When you are buying the food, you don't feel it. But if you convert that money, to your CDC, <laughs> yeah, then you feel so that yes, Boca. I'm spending money. Yes, I'm spending money. <laughs> but how can money. you make sure? How would, if you want to, let's say, eat your Ghanaian food mm -hmm. there and uh, you don't want it to be too expensive because you just came there and now working? Yeah. Well, how, how would you manage it? Oh, mostly there are African shops to around because the company accommodation given to you, there's a full kitchen and a okay. fridge. So you can prepare your food and keep it in the fridge. And one thing I liked about them is that you can't steal. Nobody will steal your there items. There's camera everywhere 24-7. In the kitchen everywhere you are you can leave your phone here you go and come back and put your phone there hey that is one thing i like about them wow criminality no you won't get it there you will not hear of arm robbies no 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 and before your next question let me chip in this okay the highest paid job that they respect a lot in dubai is the auto mechanic and the auto electrician auto mechanic and the auto electrician even when you get there today you get job today they'll do your permit for you today and it pays well mm. yes you know with that kind of job it is not that someone will be stressing you that work for 90 hours why do you need to remove this no it is something that you have learned professionally so you work according to what is presented to you so it's like you have better living conditions yes because over there the salary. mechanics they pay them three thousand five hundred four thousand around which is how much in ghana cities uh, 3,000 RAM should possibly be around uh, 7,000 Ghana CD if you convert mm. it to so, Yeah, because the CD to the DRAM is 1.6. Okay. You understand? So, mechanics get as low as 3,000 to as high as 6,000. Wow. Depending on your... That's immediately you are starting with. Yes. Work. Immediately you get there, you can get your first salary to be 2,500 RAM. Wow. Yes. Wow. It's better than the other jobs. Mm. Now, the next one that pays, which we call the security job, a security guard yes it also pays well in dubai okay it, sometimes you can get to pay around 2000 2500 but the issue is that when you enter into dubai there's something they call the syria you syria look, yes you're supposed to go to school to go and have that syria certificate mm. before you can work with a security agency so how long would you go to it school two for weeks. just two weeks just two weeks but, but it's just it's not bad. how much is it in oh sometimes it costs around two thousand three thousand thousand five dollars depending on the company you are going into okay but as soon as you're done with this are you assured of your job because sometimes the company that gives you author authorization notes to go and lend the syria okay so once you done lend the syria you can get access to do the security job and once again they have consulting firms around in dubai okay you understand so for example, if i have a consultant in dubai and i'm providing a security job at the end of the month, you pay me something from your salary. Okay. 
Understand? So it happens. You know that you see some of the adverts, some of the people will tell you that I went, they said security, I went to pay this, I have to pay 2000 for this, I have to, you know, it happens. That is why I'll keep on saying that you need to get the right people to give you the right consultation before you move. Sometimes people come to my office here. I look at a young man, you, you, can't, you can't survive in Dubai. <laughs> Travel is not easy. Anywhere, even in America, even in Canada, name the countries. It is not easy anywhere. But as long as you continue to work with the system, you begin to know the system. Exactly. Yes. But recently, we took some guys to Dubai. I was even with them on that trip. Then they had a cleaning job. You know, cleaning is very common in Dubai. It is very, very common. Mm-hmm. But you have to work for 11 hours a day. Wow. Yes. And the cleaning pay around 1,000, 1,001 dirham. Which is around 2,000 Ghana a year. Then again, people see it to be better than what is happening in our country here. Guys, there is no cleaner in this country, trust yeah, you me. Maybe I'll work in bank, the Bank of Ghana and we paid 2,000 Ghana CD. Understand? But mostly, getting the documents is one of the most important things. I always tell clients that comes here that your security depends on your documents. If you're living in somebody's country illegal, your life is in danger. Mm. But if you're living in a country with legality, then you know that you can do anything that you want to do. So I always tell them that when you enter into the country, you should do anything that can help you get your document first. Mm. Even if it is 500 AD that they are paying you, pick it once you get your document that you know overstay. As time goes on, you get an open eye. You may definitely get a company that will employ pay you more than that. Okay. So then, let me let's direct the questions a bit. We'll come back to the jobs and we'll talk about the salaries and the rest. Sure. Okay. If uh, somebody what was the probability of somebody leaving Ghana? Mm-hmm. The person then we didn't go to tertiary, mm-hmm. yes, maybe SHS certificate. Mm-hmm. Probably the person can go to Dubai and hustle and make money. What is that? Is that possible for when start from the beginning and you make your life in Dubai? It's very possible. When you get to Dubai, the first thing they ask you is your CV. And with the CV, they don't look at your educational qualification. So what do they look at? They look at the CV because they want. They want to find out if you are at age to work. Okay. You understand? They normally look at the age contents. See, the labor laws protect the workers than the one who employ you to work for you. In Dubai? Yes. I Anybody see. that will tell you the labor law. If 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 you employ somebody and you maltreat or you give the person a kind of treatment the person doesn't like, when the person goes to labor, you are in trouble. Mm. Yes. Sometimes they can even hurt the whole company, investigate the issue before they allow the company to operate. I see. So when you go to their labor office, it's very big environment. Very big. Just go and lodge your complaint. 48 hours to work on your complaint for you. That's what okay. I like about them. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. So what are the jobs in Dubai and how much are their salaries? So you spoke about the auto mechanic. Yes. So the auto mechanic and, and the then, auto electrician. Yes. You That's can the get highest as, paid. Yes. You can get as, as much as 2000 to 3500 depending on how long you have been there. And, and, then, and you know, what currency is the 2500? The 2500, you call it, could be around uh, 3000, if I'm not mistaken. Around 3000 3, Ghana cities. Yes, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But you have to, what do you need to do that job? No. What qualifications do they look at? They just, sometimes when you get there in the interview, they ask you, have you been a mechanic before? Yes, I have been before. What kind of cars do you work on? A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. And you know one thing about their system? They work with machines. Okay. Yes, and they have machines that does the work for them. So all you need to know is to know how to operate the machine. On it, you on it. Off it, you off it. Remove it, you remove it. So who? What if you don't know how to use the machine? You definitely meet a local, which is maybe like, I say the local, not a Dubarian, but a Ghanaian who has been in that company before. Okay. So the person can help you. So the one month of being with the company is like a resource for you to. So they will, so you get on the job training. Sure. So even if you are like a normal mechanic in Ghana, you work on Corolla and those, you can go there and you can be Perfectly. a good mechanic. Perfectly. Even as I'm talking to you right now, yesterday I received a call from one company that give them three mechanics. They even thought I was still in the system. Oh, okay. Even I'm back to Ghana. Mm. So it means that our Ghanaian mechanics can take advantage of this yes. opportunity. It pays them well. Seriously. Yeah. So most of the time I recommend mechanics a lot to go to Dubai and work. Now, let me chip in this thing. The salary we are looking at, the reason why the salary is even that way is that the accommodation is expensive in Dubai. Even the best space in Dubai is around 880 to 1080, as much as 1280. Wow. So your month's accommodation alone is around 2000 Ghana CD. So if somebody is paying the accommodation for you, at the same time pay you 2500 Ghana CD or 2000 CDs as your salary, it's about 4500. Okay. And ideally, for me personally, from where I sit, I think it's quite better. 
So what about so now you said that when you're working you have an accommodation or bed space yes so from that place to where you work mm -hmm. um how do you go the transportation how's it like? is far the company provides you with transportation so on your offer letter you see put that transportation allowance this food allowance this oh, you also get food allowance yes sometimes it's some of the companies include it okay some of the companies even have like what we normally call it they just like the dining hall okay when it is break time you go there you go and eat mm. but the issues are because of the temperature, the way the sun shines or scorched in Dubai, those who work on the field, especially the construction works. As I'm speaking to you, there's this company in Dubai that they are doing a railway construction camp job. Okay. They've asked us to give them 50 people. As I speak to you now. And wow. we are solely going to recruit them. Wow. Now what happens is that when we pick you from Ghana here, you go to the company the next day you start working. Now what do they do there? It's a construction company. Hold the flag, there's a car coming, hold the red. The car pass, you drop it. Green, come and pass. When they are digging and there is, uh, how do you call it, pipe holes and other stuff, you remove them. Normal thing that we do as laborers to do what? To help. Mm, it's like by day job in Ghana. Yes. That is what they do. So basically, and over there, you know, when it's even 7 o'clock, you still see that it is not late. Like 7 p.m.? It's 7 p.m. You wow. still see that. Yeah, their time run faster. I don't know the kind of time they use. Normally, I say their time run faster than anybody's <laughs> time. You know, even if it is 8 o'clock before you see the darkness coming. Mm. So normally, they leave the camp around 5 o'clock okay. to the site for work. Then 6, 6, 37, they start work. 12 o'clock, you have three hours break. Okay. You go for break on 12 and you come around 3. Okay. So instead of you closing 5, you end up closing 6. Mm, because that means doesn't break. come. The three hours break to is a factor. Exactly. exactly. Okay. So that's how it works. Okay. So it means that your transportation too is sorted out. So it means sorted that your out. salary, you can use your salary to just keep and also get your documents. Exactly. Okay. And mostly, those who, those guys who work with their labor, who works in the labor camp, it protects you because you don't even have fun to waste your money. Mm. You're always in camp. You only have Friday as off. Okay. Friday, that's when you are going to wash and do or not. By the time you even finish, it is even late again. You understand? Unless of course you have something extraordinary you want to go and do in town. That is where you come to town and mm. come and work. You understand? And their their companies are a bit far away from the town. You understand? They are a bit far away from the town. So okay, basically. Uh, that is how it works. Mm. I, so I, I heard that during the Fridays, a lot of people usually move from their companies to town to come yeah. and have some fun. Yeah. That's depends what on you. It depends it, on you. It people. depends on if you want to have fun. Always I tell people, I give them advice that you know the reason why you travel. Because so yeah. you must not misuse the reason why you travel. Again, I tell people a lot that travel is about management. We manage travel. If you want to go to the US, <laughs> then you don't have the requisites needed things to go. You can start from somewhere. And it all counts on experience. That's why I thought that we do what we call travel management here. So if we take you there, you respect us and obey our instructions and our order. When a bigger offer comes, you don't mind calling a place on it. Okay. Then you move from there. Especially those who have done their two years and they are coming back down to renew their contracts. Why not? And the most interesting is that if you do the two years and you are coming home, the company buys your air tickets. Oh, okay. For you to come home. You understand? Now, one thing that and a lot of people don't understood in the Dubai system is that if I have my residence permit, this is what we call the freelance residence permit. No company did it for me. It is my own personal residence permit that I'm using in Dubai. Okay. So I can get a job that can pay me four thousand dirham because I did my card by myself. It's expensive. So how much is the card? The card you could get around twenty five thousand from twenty down to twenty five thousand Ghana cities. Ghana cities. Twenty thousand Ghana cities for the card. Yes, the card. As much as 20,000, 25,000 Ghana CDs. Does it expire? Do you have to renew it? It's two years. Then you renew it. And so every two years, 20,000 Ghana CDs? No. What happens is that when the next two years that you're going to renew this card, you need what we call NOC. Okay. That means that the company who does the card for you is now releasing you to another company. Mm -hmm. So that company will now take the card and do it for you. Oh, okay. That's the reason why your salary drops. Because you don't expect a company to spend 20,000 CDs in doing your card for you and still pay you that huge sum of, sum of money. Okay, but if you have your own card, then you get the huge exactly. Sum. But the disadvantage too is that they don't normally like employ people who has their own card. Why? You, before you get a job with your own card, then it's a multi million companies on those companies down there because you can leave at any time. Oh, okay. The card belongs to me. Mm. Maybe they print on the job six months, seven months, then you are leaving. <laughs> but if you have a contract with them, they are going to stay for the two years and they dance their card for you. That means you can stay with them. But the labor law against it that after six months, if you don't like the job, you can terminate your appointment with the company. Oh, okay. And so by that six months, if they are supposed to pay you maybe four thousand Ghana CD, and they are paying you two thousand Ghana CD, 
So out of the form six months, they make around twelve thousand CDs from the card. So even if you go, they don't lose that much. Oh, okay. You get it. I That's guess why it. they made it such a way that you're supposed to stay with the company for six months. Wow. Before basically you can okay, so let's talk more about that. So we've done the auto mechanic, the electrician. What yes, other one is there? We have the cleaning job. Which cleaning. Is very common and popular in Dubai. That's so most of the people does. Yes, so compared to some of the one you don't you don't need to have any experience. No, 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 you can no, just no, do the cleaning. No, 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 the cleaning job. And it pays around thousand EAD to thousand two EAD. That's around maybe thousand five, two thousand Ghana CDs. No, around two thousand Ghana CDs. Around two thousand Ghana CDs. Yeah, thousand is a uh, thousand two is around nineteen thousand uh, one thousand nine hundred and twenty five or something like that. Oh, okay. Much. So that one you are working six days a week. Six days a week. They they don't work on Fridays, but the rest of the day you work. Now sometimes what happens in the cleaning? If you are in an apartment, if you are cleaning in an apartment, you go to work very early, as early as 4 a.m. Wow. Latest by 8, you close. Oh, okay. You go and sleep. When it's around, when it's around uh, 8, 9 p.m., you come back again and work. Mm. It's around 1, 12, 1, you close again. Oh, okay. So it's hardly when you see those who normally work or clean the towns, you see them cleaning. So there's a time, unless those who work at the mall, the restaurant, and all yeah, they are boys, always cleaning. Yeah, they are always around <laughs> to clean. Yeah, always so, but then, would you, so apart from that, is there any other job there without, you don't have any skills you can do? Oh, yeah, even with the security job, if you don't have skills, you can do the security job. But you, the see, yeah. you can do. So, the security, who pays for you to go to the class? No, you have to pay yourself. You have to pay yourself. Yes. You know, we've engaged a lot of companies. You know, because we even recently I engaged one of the company, the one I'm telling that they said they needed 50 people. What I was trying to do with them is that once the people are coming to work in your company, why don't you do everything for them? In terms of the travel the, documents, the visa, the ticket, and other stuff. Now they also came with this and they showed me a lot of documents that sometimes when they even buy the ticket for the people to come, when they come to the company and they work for two months, three months, then they run away. Wow. Then you that spent the money, your money has gone in vain. Mm. And it happens it happens a lot. So the Ghanaians will get to Dubai and they yes. run away. Because when you get to Dubai, definitely you meet a friend. That friend will tell her, oh, that job, oh, 1,000 is not good, come and get you something like 1,000. See, that is why sometimes they get stranded. Mm. You understand? It is better for you to work with a company that will pay you salary every day than to work with an individual or a private company, which is lesser or few number of people. When the month ends, they will do carry forward one month. Mm. And it normally happens in a private company. The private companies have one month carry forward salary. Oh, okay. So but they will not pay you that month. Uh, they postpone it to another yeah. month. Yeah. So that's how it is. One month carry forward. But if you work with these big, big companies at the labor camp, the construction companies, the electrification company, the mechanic, the, the mechanic and all those people, at the end of the day, every month, you have access to take your salary. Oh, okay. And one important thing is that if you send them for the two years and you are coming, there is an amount of money the labor law demand that they should be keeping. They will not take it from a thousand to a thousand five. It is part of the contract. Okay. So when you are going, you tell that you are going, they give it to you as your back pay to take it to your country. Oh, that's nice. Yes. How much is that? Oh, people get at least fifteen thousand Ghana CD, mm. some get ten thousand, some even get twenty thousand. Depend on how hard working you are to the company and how well you serve the company. Oh, that's a nice that's a nice money to take home. Sure. Okay, they so what other jobs? More let's talk more jobs. Oh, there are a lot of jobs. There are even the colorful jobs that we are looking for. The like digital the white marketing. Color. Yes, the digital marketing and all that stuff. But it takes time to get. Okay. I sometimes I advise some of the people that embark on the trip that look, don't allow anybody to give you one month visa to take you to Dubai. One month. One month visa. To it's take not you enough. To Dubai. It's not enough. Unless of course the company has already jobbed available. Okay. For instance, what we are doing with the uh, the railway construction company I'm talking to you about, I know that when I take you there on one month visa, the next day they start processing your documents. Oh, okay. But most of the companies in Dubai they want to see how hardworking you are. So they only they can only rectify that if you have worked for them one month or two months. Mm. So provided you went there with one month, then the one month ends, they say they cannot employ you because she didn't work to their expectations. <laughs> You've started becoming overstay. Wow. So how many months? At least three months is okay. Three Ninety days visa okay. is okay. At least ninety days visa is okay. okay. But I always tell them that go with the employment visa. Even as I talk to you right now, the government of Ghana is saying that because of things that happen in the Gulf city. So even before somebody will depart from the company, the country, the labor department, we have a labor department at Accra. Okay. They have to supervise and know that the country you are going is legible, and they are ready to face any consequences that occurred during your travel. Wow. You understand? So. One, it depends on the company that is processing your mm. documentation for you. We've heard about a lot of issues that happen in Dubai. So many I've issues. encountered some at the airport. Some, see, living in Dubai without a document is like hell. Wow. Well, every, this card, everything you do, you need this card. 
Mm. Everything you need to buy, you need this card. So if you don't have it, when you say everything, give me like an idea. So. If you want to buy even SIM card, is this when wow. they expire? The SIM card expire. Mm. You don't have to pay me salary. It is this because this is what you used to obtain your labor card. So your bank account. Your everything. bank account is this. Okay. So without this, it's it's like you are living in a hell in Dubai. Wow. So if you have a company that is saying that I'm going to do this for you and pay you thousand thousand to them for you to work for me, for me, yeah, where I, I, sit, know, I get what you're saying. I'll now. Give you it's, it's a good it. deal. Yeah, it's a very good deal. I'll I'll but are you it. assured that the company will do the card for you? That is why we, before we even pick you on the process, we let you know that this is the company we have, and the company can get you. Okay, so you only deal with companies that will get companies. a card. Unless, of course, ABR. At that point, when you come to our office, we don't have any company that is employing. Okay. Maybe the period of which you invested in our menu, we don't have a company that is employing you. So what we tell you is that you still have the three months visa. But make sure that you have one month rent in your pocket and your agent fee. Okay. Because whatever you do, you definitely get a job. Mm. You can't stay in Dubai three months without a job. Unless, of course, you don't know. You didn't go there to go and work. I see. Yes. Unless you don't go there to go and work. Once you've gone there to go and work, see, the jobs are coming every day, every day, every day. But the question is, are they legible? <laughs> Why legible are they? Can they do your permit for you? If the company can do the permit for you, my brother, even if they are paying you thousand five, trust me, it's better. Mm. Because you have your sound mind. When you sleep, you wake up and know that I'm living in that country fit. Okay. But if you don't have the right document, I know people who are overstay as much as forty thousand drum. Wow. Ask yourself when is the person coming back to Ghana? <laughs> and that forty thousand is close to about ninety thousand Ghana City. Wow. So they are just waiting for amnesty. If there's an amnesty, I see. Check out. So now I'm going to ask some random questions people no want problem. to know. So now people want to know mm-hmm. that uh, if you are, if the ladies want to know that when they get to Dubai and they are working, mm-hmm. what kind of attire do they have to wear? Do they have to dress like the the residents? How do no, they dress? Normally, like? some companies provide uniform. Uniform. Yes. Okay. Those who don't provide uniform, they tell you to dress decently. That's all. So when you say decently, do you have to cover your head? No, uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a free movement. <laughs> Dubai is like at where you are living in Ghana. Oh, okay. But just that you don't dress upward when you are in office. Okay, so formal attire. Formal attire, that's all. Okay, then that's simple. Uh, it's, uh, it's very simple. You know, formally, my company has been engaged in this travel and work in Dubai. So before we even started this travel and work in Dubai, I have to visit the place first. Okay. I went to the place myself. I go through the system. I acquired my residence permits. I acquired my permit ID. I speak to numerous of Ghanaians living in Dubai. Just to get a fair idea. You know, sometimes I tell people that it is better for you to protect your integrity and reputation than to leave it in the mud and tomorrow you cannot call it. Exactly. So I did the whole research. I came back and I told them, that look, we can do it, but you have to do it in a different way. That will be peculiar from what others are doing. So what do we do? We make sure that we get you the job. And we make sure we tell you that what the job entails. We'll tell you in our office before you move. Exactly. And we make sure that whatever we tell you is exactly what you are going to meet there. Look, we encountered some issues some time back. Let me just chip this in. When they opened the, the border, that was on 1st September. We traveled on 7th September. And by then, we are living on assumption. Because that is the, f- the freshest time that the embassy was open. Okay. You, you won't believe it that the person who gave us the assurance that when you come, this is the job, this is this and this and this. Huh. We get it, it was a different thing. Oh. It was a different thing. So we have to maneuver, find ways to sort out. I don't really, the money is supposed to spend one CD, you end up spending five CD, ten CDs. Hmm. You understand? But whatever I'm telling everybody that is watching today, that we have tested the system, we have been in the system, we've talked to a couple of people in the system, we know their concerns and we know their worries. When they come here, we assure them that even if not 100%, 95% of situations will be solved. Because if you are in Dubai and you are free, I'm also free. If you are in Dubai, you are facing challenges. I'm the same person you are facing that. Because you call me 24-7. So when they are in Dubai and there's an issue, they can always reach you? We do a lot. Recently okay. when I entered, there was one company with some employees we give to them. And they wanted to be on a freelance thing. So there's somebody who said that I'll do the card for you. I'll take you 8,000 dirham. Work for me. Your salary is 800, 1,000 EAD. 
at the end of the eight months, I'll give you a card so that you go. They work for six months, they've not seen the face of the card. Mm. And when they call this man, he doesn't respond to them and stuff. I went there myself, I took the man to labor. 48 hours, I received their cards for them. Wow. You understand? So now they have their cards and they are working with it. So if you deal with the right agency and the right company, when you, find, you have problems, they can come. In. Our products are expensive, trust me. Our products are expensive because when matters arises, you don't give us money, we come to solve the problem for you. Mm. That is why you can see people taking, oh, bring me 1,000, bring me 2,000, bring me to let me do Dubai for you. We don't do that way. Because you and I even know from the deepest part of your heart that how much is plane ticket. <laughs> so the person is asking to bring the money. Already he has taken money from the company you are going to. Mm. So he is fully set here. Yes. And he goes there to go and suffer. And when there's an issue, that person cannot come and do what? And help you solve the issues. Mm. But in Dell's Avenue, and our people all over, they will testify for you. We never leave them when they have issues. Even if we cannot go, we make sure that we, we connect with the Ghana Embassy in so and so country they are to get the issues off. Wow. Because if you have see, I believe that if you are in Dubai and I come, Joshua, Charlie, I'm in Dubai. Charlie, boss, let me pick you out and buy you some drinks and some coffee. It is it is much better than for me. I feel like proud when I see those things. Mm. So when I'm also getting myself involved and trying to do the work for you, I put all my all in it. That is why we tell you now, over here when you come, obey instructions. Don't say, I know A, B, C, D there. And they said this, this. They are they. And we are also here to do our work. Exactly. Once you trust us and you come to us, give us the opportunity to do the work for you. And you love it and I'll love it. Exactly. You smile and I'll smile. Mm. Wow. I think with all these things you have said, sure. And the picture is now very clear. So let's talk about. So let's say somebody wants to go to Dubai. The person comes to your office. What do the person need? What documents the person have to bring? How long does it take for the person to go? The maximum that you can stay with a company is two weeks. Two weeks. Yes, that's okay. the maximum. But if you have a ready set company, you are taking you to one week. Wow. We are done, and we are, we our visas are short. Mm. Are, those, are, the circumstances are they work uh, visas or tourist visas? Mostly, what is happening now is that most of the because of the Emirates ID, there are people who goes there with the employment visa. Okay. There are some people who also goes with the tourist visa. Mm. But we make sure that at the end of it, you have your this. Okay. So that you don't overstay, or you don't overuse your visa to bring you any challenges like fine and other kind of no. No, not at all. Okay, so even if you go with a tourist visa, you yes. change it to a white yes. visa. How long does it take to do the change? It doesn't take time. If you get there today and you want to change your visa the next day, it doesn't take time. But is there an additional cost? If the company is doing it for you, because they are going to deduct it from your salary, that is the reason I pay you that small salary. Okay. It's not small, but I just mentioned the word small. So mm -hmm. it means that the company will change your tourist to the white visa? The, they change, first of all, they do is that when you go with a tourist visa, the company changed the tourist visa to what we call the employment visa. Okay. Once they do the employment visa for you, you go and do what we call change of status. Now the change of status means that you are changing from the tourist now to the employment visa. Oh, okay. So once you have the change of status, you can apply for a residence. Hmm. Now, if you apply for the residence, you are required to go for how do you call it? Medicals. Once medicals. you pass the medicals, okay. you are good. Is it a COVID nineteen test? COVID nineteen is part and all that test is like blood and all those things. HIV. Part. Yes, they do HIV. Okay. You know, the HIV test is just some small form. They just place it on your thumb. Mm. Within two minutes, your test is ready. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Within two minutes. Uh, I've been, so if you fill the test, you won't get the visa? No, no, you won't get it. Unless you go back again. Wow. And then do it until you get the right test done before you can. Okay. Uh, so so the, how, much does, how much does it cost to leave here from your company angle? So if you want to go to work in Dubai, how much do you charge? It depends on the job that is available okay. and the time because you know sometimes we don't prefer the company buying the ticket for you okay. because we don't want them to hold you to that and glue you on that chair if there is a problem so we prefer you buy your tickets okay you do your visa and you entry mm. so that in case of any emergency you just go your way mm. because you pay for your plane tickets you did your visa but the situations where they do the visa and all those things from you that is when restrictions comes Mm. Well, even if you check out, their company name will be in the immigration system that they did the visa for you. And immigration will find out from them if you violated any rule. Wow. Yes. Sure. There's they something they can't they call, even lie on you and... Oh, oh, there's something they call ASCON. ASCON? Yes. They place ASCON on you. You can't move from UAE. Wow. There is nowhere you pass. 
<laughs> there's no way you pass. So, uh, Joshua, mm -hmm. uh, we are doing our best wow. to make sure that we helped the people. So, what is the year. what's the range of the amount it will cost? Oh, sometimes six thousand, sometimes ten thousand, sometimes twelve thousand. So, like the let's say let's solve for like the auto mechanic, mm -hmm. how much will it cost? Sometimes like from ten thousand to twelve thousand. Ten thousand to twelve thousand. Yes. And within two weeks, you are gone. You are gone. So, what does that money entail? Is it does it cover your passports? That, for instance, with the mechanic. That money covers your because you come here with your passport and your passport picture. That's the only two things we need from you. Your passport and your passport, your passport picture. picture. That's the only. How thing many passport pictures? One. Yes, one. one. Yes. That's okay. the only thing that we need from you. What size is the passport uh, picture? The American size. American that size. That is about four hundred centimeters by four hundred centimeters. Okay. Now, if you lead at the outskirts of Accra, and you can't come to the office with the passport and the passport picture, you can just scan and send an electronic form. To oh, okay. Everything. Now. The Dubai visa is what we call the cable visa, the electronic visa. Oh, okay. So you will not see the visa being pasted in your passport. It is a printout that we give to you. Uh -huh. So you, we just take the passport and the passport picture. The 12,000 you are paying include your plane tickets. It includes your COVID-19 test here in Ghana. Okay. It, com it comprises with your immigration check out here in Ghana. Okay. It comprises with your visa everything once you give us that money all you need to do now is to look for your pocket money because we even pay the agent fee on your behalf it's part of it okay but there are some of the works maybe we didn't have it directly the company didn't secure directly it's somebody that secured it and call on us to bring you mm. so therefore you must pay an agent fee to that person okay. so it comprises one month accommodation your agent fee your visa your tickets your COVID 19 one month insurance Yes. So if after the one month, so after the one month, you stay with the company. That's why we don't. That's why we say we do travel management. Okay. So within that, it's our mandate to make sure we get a job for you. Okay. Because the second month, you can't pay for accommodation. Mm. So we make sure that we put measures in place, critical measures in place to get you a job within that one month. So is there any do you, does the do your clients sign a contract? That, yes. Normally that they sign a contract. Assured that they will get a job within one month. Sure. Issues like, for instance, with the cleaning jobs and maybe uh, currently the, the ongoing project that I'm talking to you about. The is railway? The, the railway construction. Okay. We know things are being difficult in Ghana here mm. and raising money is becoming difficult. So what we just do is that maybe instead of the entire 10000 or 9000 provide 5000 we also provide the balance. Okay. Now, once we add the balance, we go into agreement. Your salary is 1000 to at the end of the month. You give us the 200 on it for one year. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Yes, we do that for one year. Then you are good to go. Oh, that's very nice. You understand? And you just calculate two hundred times twelve. How much mm. are you getting? Thousand six. You understand? That times when you convert it to Ghana money is around four thousand Ghana CD. It's summer. We don't take anything from you. Oh. That's how we do it. Did it add anything to it? No, we don't. Because with issues about, we are now reviving from COVID nineteen, mm. and you must make sure that your clients feel comfortable to recommend other people to you exactly it is better for you to get a recommendation and keep your office running every day than pollute prices and a whole month nobody even comes to your office mm. you understand that's so true. we look at that constraint that's 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 very very good that's very good i mean a lot of people can take advantage sure. of the opportunity sure wow sure. so it depends on the time that you come to the office and the offer that is available mm. you understand we explain the offer to you if you are cool to go and we don't leave you we take you from here to the airport we we'll check you in, we we'll cross you the counter, you sit in the plane. By the time you arrive in Dubai, our rep is there. The one who is managing the Agoma Travels in Dubai, she's already at the airport waiting for you. Oh, wow. So she picks you from the airport to your accommodation. Wow. Or to your website. So we do clean, transparent, and open jobs here. That's amazing. Yes. And even before you even leave, two days before then, we give you, we share her contact with you. Mm. So she begin communicating with you. Before you even leave the air. So by the time you get there, she's there to pick it up. That's amazing. That's what we do. Then I think my, my heart is rest assured yes. now. Because yes. the, the amount of things I have watched <laughs> on this issue. Oh, <laughs> <sh> <laughs> I mean, when you see that, you, you, your heart will break. Sure. But with this, it's assured that at least when you go, you get a job and you also get better offers even while you are there. We manage travels. We do manage travels. Let me give you one important secret in this Dubai thing. Share, share, let's see. I just want to share something to mm -hmm. the viewers that are watching. You see, when you have this Emirates ID, it guarantees you to travel to 17 countries visa-free. Wow. 
which European countries are part. Wow. So if you live under our management, if you live under those having to manage you, at the end of the day, if you don't want to come back to Ghana, we can help you continue your journey. Wow. So, wh so which other countries can you go visa free? Well, uh, you are tempting me to mention some <laughs> other countries for you. You mentioned two. Mentioned yeah? two. You can go to Romania. Wow. With this, with mm. visa free. You can go to even all the five states around them, visa free. So you can go. So do you have to come back to Ghana to? No, go, this is a residence permit for you in Dubai. So you can just buy your plane ticket and, and there you go. go. You can go to Armenia, visa free. I see. You can go to Malaysia, visa free. With this, once mm. you have this, you understand. But we only need some small documents to add to it. You don't mm. go to embassy for visas. Mm. Oh, you understand. That is why when I was doing the introduction about myself, I told you that I'm, I deal in immigration. I'm an immigration consultant. Oh, we are not agents. We are not guru boys. <laughs> you understand. <laughs> so we understood what we are doing. Exactly. And we know what we are doing. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Oh yes. Yes. And you can follow our track records. Mm. Even if you want to move, you can just move around our area here. We start asking the number of boys we have picked from this place. Some are in the US, some are in Canada, some are in UK, etc. Mm. Yeah. So they even speak about us to other people. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. So now let's talk, just summarize the other places like the, the UK, yes. um, US, and yes. uh, I think Canada. Yes. Let's summarize them whole. Because those places, we don't usually hear these kind of issues about them. So, how is it like to go there? What do we need? What jobs are available? There are no issues because they protect their country. Mm. You understand? There are no issues because they went with the, the right documents. There are no issues because they went through the right people. Okay. As I indicated earlier on, we always need to do... The, it's not because the place is bad, so everything about the place is bad. You can do that change. For people to get to know that the place is not bad, mm. but it's the people that are taking you there that are giving you the misinterpretations and the misconception that is what is bringing you problems. Mm. Oftentimes, what do I say? I tell people that travel is like marriage. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> marriage, when it goes in and it works for you, it works for you. You enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But if you go and it becomes issues, problem every day, you face that same problem in travels every day. Wow. Why? Because you didn't make the right choice. Mm. But if you make the right choice, you will not face those problems. You understand? Exactly. So, all other countries too, we see similar issues, but they just don't come out for you to see. Mm. Currently, we are running a program in Canada that we call the Canada School Labor. And what we are doing is that it's a two years permit, two years working permit. And then we are currently doing the firm in uh, Canada, who is agriculture. And we also have our Canadian expert immigration officers there that would deal with them hand to hand. So even more than that, if you can go there, they are there to represent us and do everything on our behalf. Oh, that's good. Now, this period takes between 8 to 10 months because it is a permit. It's not a visa. What's the difference between a visa and a permit? Okay. A visa is a form of sticker, sometimes being pasted in your passport or being printed as electronic for you. It's electronic device, uh, electronic substance. It only gives you access to one country. Okay. So visa only give you the access to, to that person's country. country. Okay. So if but a Canadian visa can only go to Canada. You can only go to Canada. In the purpose of going for tourism, uh, business purposes, family visit, and all those things. Those are the things that we call the visa. Okay. Now the permit is what gives you the authority and the permission to stay in one country and work. Oh, okay. You understand? The permit gives you the access to the country and also permits you to stay in that country and then work. Hmm. So currently what we are doing is not a visa, but it's a permit. That is why it takes time. And as I speak to you, because of the COVID-19, most of the embassies are not working with this tourist visa and the kind of stuff. A lot of them are doing the working visa and stuff. So what we do is that it, it takes about 8 months to 10 months, we secure you the Canadian permits for you to travel to Canada. Okay. Now what happens is that we charge $11,000. Hmm. Somebody say, hey, $11,000 is too much. Maybe we more. Maybe we <laughs> because the job we are giving you, we are showing you a job. Because this package comes with job, accommodation, and plane tickets. Okay. Imagine how much is the plane ticket from here Wait, to Canada? Didn't add the, the test to the COVID 19 test? No, as for the Canada, we don't do the COVID 19 test for you, do it by yourself. Okay. But with the Dubai, we do the test for you. Mm. Understand? Now, the company we are giving to you, the company is giving you a job that could pay you $2,500 to $3,000. 
a month. Okay. So imagine that you are paying us eleven thousand dollars, and mm. we give you twenty four years, twenty four months to live in Canada. Sorry, you are using only four months or five months to pay our money for us. The mm. rest goes into your pocket. Okay. So that assumption that the money is too much, it's it's here and there, neither here nor there. But, the, but it keeps long before you get the permits. Eight to ten months. If yes. you want a job to do. Yes, because you, you are getting involved in the process. You are part of the process, so you know what is happening. Okay. Medical alone rather take about three months. Wow. And their medical is not like the normal thing that you just go to a Kai house or so and just go and do and come. No, it takes time before the medical is done. So if medical alone is taking three months, take it out of the eight months. How much is mm -hmm. it? Five months. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that when we do the submission, when we collect the documents that we need, we only need you to pay five thousand mm dollars. -hmm. We'll do everything for you. The remaining. If you come, that will find I'm going to work with the company you are giving to me. So therefore, I only have like thousand, or after paying the five thousand, I don't have enough money to do what to pay. We we'll allow you to go because we are operating the system of your salary. You we'll have an agreement that every month give us thousand dollar of your salary. So we are not scared about that at all. Mm. We are not scared about that at all. Every month we take it from your salary. Now what happens is that when we do the submission of your applications, within forty to fifty days, you need to get your shortlisted job. Because we are tendering the CV, and the CV is what is going to come up with the jobs they are giving to you. Okay. So once you have been shortlisted, that is one step. Now the next step is that they will have a meeting with you. It either comes in Zoom, or it comes in the, how do you call it, Google. So like an interview. Yeah, an interview. Once you qualify with the interview, the issue with the job offer. It is the job offer that determines the number of hours you are going to work, where you are going to work, your salary, and all the conditions attached to it. And now it doesn't take one month before it comes. Sometimes one month, Sometimes one and a half months. Okay. Right? So we'll get you involved in the process. Mm. So therefore you get to know that what I'm doing is either fake or not fake. Exactly. You understand? So basically okay. that's how it works. Mm. Okay. Mm. I think that's cool. So let's go to the US. Yes. The US currently, normally we deal with the uh, tourist visa and then the, how do you call it, the business visa and other kind of stuff. You and before you can get a permit, you either do the H1, the H1B, the O, the F, because they have categories of visas, and all these things to have to be done from the US. There, if I'm applying H1B for you, a company has to file for you, and now filing from US sometimes take about two years. Oh, yes, it takes time. Sometimes you can be there if you're lucky, six months you get it. But why is that? Does it take so long? Yes, because it is it's a file, it takes processes, and a lot of people are in the queue. <laughs> you understand? Before they even book a date for you to go for interview. Wow. You understand? So currently, the American embassy, there is no even date for you. Mm. Yes, there's no even date for you to go for interview. They're only giving emergency dates and emergency appointments that correspond with uh, students who have a student application oh, okay. day that is due. That is when they do all those things and then be international protocol, or some urgent business travel. But currently, the embassy is not operating as it used mm. to operate. Then it, that means if you really want to work this year, it's mm -hmm. not US you have to look at. No, 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 no. no. You can, it's even better to look at Dubai. Because if, we are going, if you want to work this year, make some money, you want to travel and work outside, it's, you can't do US. You can't, you can't do US. What if you have a. Because um, I heard that we're looking for nurses and doctors. In US? Yes. <laughs> Again, during the, the heat of the COVID, I think. I last saw that year. document, and it wasn't the real documents. Wow. Yes. You know, a lot of people take advantage of the system. And sometimes I tell my fellow colleagues that the more you grow in the business, the better you understood the steps of the business. Mm. You cannot compare somebody who has set up a travel agency one year to somebody who has been in the system for five years. Mm. Because you are now going to be exposed to things. So those who are coming, the one year plus things, they are the people who normally filter the system with mm. irrelevant information. Mm. We have been there before. But thanks to God, we have left that stage. Mm -hmm. We are in a different stage now. Mm -hmm. You understand? If American Embassy wants to recruit, they don't publish it. Mm. Yes, that is one thing you take it from me. American Embassy will not come and publish that we are recruiting. So unless in your home country, if they need employee, employers in your home country, that yes. is why they advertise it for you to see. And the employment process passes through some channel. Even before you can get there. Yesterday, you can see this. This is uh, an employment offer letter from one of the companies in in America. Okay. Take a look at the offer letter itself. 
This is how it looks like. Wow. This have to go to this the... This is from the Secretary of State. Yes. Mm. And the Secretary of State in U.S. Mm. just don't offer... The, the state of Illinois. <laughs> yes. They just don't bring out offer letters like that. Mm. Do you know how long this has kept? How long? Two years now. Wow. Yes. And this, I think the date on it is... Um, 29th June. Yes, that is 2021. when it was issued. Wow. But when we started the process, it took two, two years. years. Now. Yes. You have to be going forth and back, forth and back, forth and back. And once you have this one, trust me, 90% your visa is assured. Mm. Because it has gone through all the relevant processes and all the relevant processes in America before coming here. So you get a green card? Yes. When you get there within one month, you're supposed to get your green card. Mm, but two years, yeah. Even yeah, that, you see, the patience that we are not having as individuals and clients, that is what is leading us to where we don't want mm, to go. That's why there's so much fraud in the yes. system. Yes. There was something that it would take you like about a year to do. And you go to somebody and say, I can do it for you one month, two months. <laughs> you will be eager and forced to, 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 to go and then mm. hide it. You understand? Even if you want, we can, there's a lot of testimonies that we have. We can mention, the list is store in the US. We can even give you to go and do your background check. You call them, they'll tell you. Wow. They just tell you that those have any, they work perfectly, but just that they are slow in doing things. Mm. They're slow in doing things that we want the right thing to be what? To be done. Exactly. That's that, that is how it works. Mm. How many people can wait for two years? It's not easy. Uh -huh. And this lady has been with us since 2018. Mm. You understand? She keep coming, we keep doing the process, keep doing the process, keep doing the... So we normally give you the encouragement that it is going to work, it will work. But just have time. For those having I mean, that's how we do our things. Mm. Once you give us the time, we will deliver. But if you come and then you rush the process with us, that is when we we'll find ourselves wanting and we'll go and do something that mm. we are not expecting to do. Exactly. So, uh, when you come to those Avenue, all we need is time and patience and we'll deliver. Wow. Okay. Now we've spoken a lot about sure, how to sure. live and work outside sure, the country. Sure, sure. Let's move into something a bit fun. So I know that you're also the director of Tourism Aid Global. <laughs> so what is Tourism Aid Global? I've been seeing you guys all over. You guys are having too much fun in the country. I saw you guys go to um, the northern part. You also gone to the western part of the country. I even see. I think last week or two, I saw that you are planning to go to Volta Region also. So what is it? Why are you guys are enjoying yourselves like that in this Ghana? You know, over the years, uh, we sat down and realized that the direction in which Ghana tourism is going. It's not one of the best mm. and uh, we all need to come together to help rescue Ghana tourism if you go to countries like Canada Canada has nothing to lives on tourism mm. yes you can search it for yourself tourism and agriculture if you take countries like US what do they have mm. they use tourism to build their country if you take countries like uh, Dubai. even Dubai Dubai 2002 2003 you of them no but when the kings came together you know there are about five shakes around they all came together let's rebuild dubai and they asked themselves how can we rebuild dubai then they said we have to leverage on tourism and if you talk about tourism it's not about going to have fun or going to see the sightseeing no tourism comprises a lot of the sectors mm. the hotel is part the chef association is part what we wear is part what we eat is part where we sleep is part wow so they sat down and said, look, why don't we put all these things into use? They put it into use. And amazingly, they are doing well. Wow. When you get to Toronto Airport in Canada, the first thing they do is that they try to convince you to buy I Love Canada. That dress. <laughs> you see, I Love Canada. Yes. You know how much is that? People pay as much as $10 for that dress. Mm. So Canadian imagine, dollars. Canadian yeah. dollars. So imagine if... See, let me tell you one amazing thing about Dubai. Do you know what Dubai does? No. If you want to do the visa, you do it with Emirates. So the money goes to Dubai. Mm. If you want to purchase their top packages, you do it with Emirates. Wow. So the money goes to Emirates. If you are picking their flight, Emirates, they give you comfortability. Mm. And they give you some priorities when you get to Dubai. Wow. So you'll be failing to do what? Buy the ticket from them. <laughs> so at the end of the day, when you are moving from Ghana here, you are paying visa to Emirates. You are paying plane ticket to Emirates, that is Dubai. You are paying hotels in em Dubai, which is Emirates. Collectively, they made money out of you. Wow. Maybe you've sat down for one year, you've prepared that money to travel, like about 20,000. Emirates alone will take that money from you, and they are developing their countries. Mm. So we realize that we need to do something to rescue Ghana. We don't need to just be talking and be making the noise. Mm. You don't need to be seen big before you can contribute to the development of Ghana. 
So we set the agenda of what we call the Tourism Made Global. And the Tourism Made Global is an international brand which is registered in Dubai. And with this Tourism Made Global, we have eight wings that we call the country chapters. Wow. Understand? So currently we are operating in 29 countries. Our target is to go to 160 countries. Wow. And we are now in 29 countries. So under the Tourism Aid Global, that we call Tourism Aid Ghana. Okay. That we call the Tourism Aid Gambia. They launched their chapter about a month ago. That we call the Tourism Aid Tanzania. They launched their chapter in last month. We are called the Tourism Aid Senegal. The Tourism okay. Aid Dubai. So those countries are smaller countries that form the Tourism Aid Global. And what do we do? It is just our purpose, our mission is to help governments build capacity of young ones in the country wow. through tourism. And that is what gave birth to tourism made Ghana. Wow. And trust me, they have been two two years in existence, and the competition they are giving to the Ministry of Tourism alone is very high. <laughs> Left alone, the uh, GTA Ghana Tourist Authority. Look, they launched tourism made Ghana in September. That was last year, because because of the COVID, they break. Then they came up with the idea that they want to do this what we call the regional tourism. If you watch last year June. We were even in the northern region doing our launching of the northern region chapter. Wow. We got to Accra and the government of Ghana is launching, launching domestic tourism and regional tourism. <laughs> that one alone is a plus to us because it is our idea. Mm-hmm. And it's good that we, we develop an idea and the whole country will take it up and be working on it. Exactly. Even if it doesn't benefit me, it will benefit somebody around me. You understand? Exactly. So tourism in Ghana is a youth movement. That is geared towards the promotion of domestic tourism wow. as well as capacity building. Wow. So when you come to tourism in Ghana, what do they do? They have what they call the working groups. And these working groups are made up of young men and women who are ready to learn. So we have the media working group. Any young guy who wants to go into media, there are skillful personnel within the group. When you meet them and interact with them, they will show you the way. Mm. We have what we call the research working group and they are doing massively. And the research documents they are bringing it out, I can see that they are acting upon it. Government is using it. Wow. Yes. Currently, the documents they brought from Izulezu, now the government mine is there. Wow. You understand? We even gave the proposal that why don't we release some of the tourist sites for the private people to do what? To manage. Exactly. And now, most of the tourist sites you see now belong to private people. And mm. they are managing it. Yes. Wow. Most of them. Even Botifos is a uh, 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 public private partnership. Wow. So if you get to motive for you don't see that way you used to be at first. Hmm. I think I have to pass there. Yes. You understand? So this is basically what these young men and women are doing. And so anybody watching here as young people and you want to champion tourism, join Tourism Aid Ghana. So how they are doing massively well. So how do we contact Tourism Aid Ghana? Oh, they are on social media, Facebook Tourism Aid Ghana, LinkedIn Tourism Aid Ghana. Uh, how do you call it? Uh, Instagram. Instagram Tourism Aid Ghana. Everywhere. Tourism Everywhere. Aid. And trust me, recently they did their Greater Accra Regional Launch. And it was massive. If you see the inferior of Sherifa Moon, hmm. if you see the inferiors on Sherifa, she said it on live TV that I have to stop what I was going to do in the North. There was a program that wow. I've been paid for to go and do in the North. But when I heard that Tourism Aid Ghana is having their lunch, I stopped it and wow. I have come. Because my body, my blood, my intestine is for tourism. Wow. So you could know the direction tourism in Ghana is heading towards. Wow. Our brother Jefoli, I salute him always everywhere I go. Mm. He has never left us out. He has been with us from day one. Wow. That we started tourism in Ghana. Everywhere we go, he comes, he talks to the youth, he tries to let them know that this is... No, see, he started something. But the same Ghanaians pulled it down. Mm. So he said, look, Richard, we are going to make it work and i stand for you wow. and he has been doing massively well look at this guy uh, mm. he's also part he's part hstv and he goes to everywhere we go just wow. trying to make sure that Ghanaians understood what tourism is did he go to the north with you guys he was at the north with us wow he was there and in, one interesting in thing, too, did he go he was there hey. one interesting thing when we go to the northern region bali the mc we had a meeting with him, and after about 30 to 45 deliberation, he said, Look, you people come, I'm giving you office for free. Oy. So, as I speak to you right now, the MC, Bali, mm-hmm. the madam has given us an office for free. That's that amazing. We come and stay in Bali and operate and help the young ones there. That is amazing. Yes. So, you can see that Tourism Made Ghana 
they are doing a massive job. Wow. Massive job. Recently, the program died in Accra. 11 media houses. Hmm. 11 from TV3 to Metro TV to TV Africa. They were all at the, at the venue to capture. Wow. So you could see that, uh, my brother, they are, they are making well. big, big, they are huge well. impact. Yes, they are doing very well. That's amazing. We love, we love the tourism thing. Wow. And we are ready to make sure that this tourism thing works. Wow. As I speak to you, next month, we are going to the East Africa. Okay. We are going to spend one month. And if I show you the list that Tanzania law has given to us, <laughs> it's amazing. And if we can connect the African diaspora that way, why won't we go? We will go. Hmm. So I'm encouraging everybody that is watching me, me being the country that the, the, the director general for tourism aid global. If you're in Ghana, I'm encouraging you to join the Ghana chapter, make an impact, show some differences. God has given you the wisdom. It is not everything that we do and we intend getting money. Somebody will tell you that the net, your network is more important than the money you get. Exactly. The people within your circle are the people that will preach to the world that who, this is the person you are. Exactly. Exactly. So join them. If you're in Tanzania, they are doing very well. Ben, one, one fantastic guy taking over the, the, the tourism sector in Tanzania. And he's our country director in Tanzania. Oh. And he's doing very well. Oh. If you go to Gambia, Omar Jamel, brilliant guy. He's doing very well, very amazing. Hmm. Even yesterday, I was on phone with him and he said, look, I'm doing some community cleanups and so on. So on. And it's wow. Cool. If you go to Uganda, Figo is there. Amazing, Kenya. You understand? So we believe that and it's our goal as a tourism bit global that by the end of this year, we should be able to establish in 50 countries. Wow. So we are calling on any individual that is willing to help us champion this cause. You come on board. Nobody is giving us anything. Government has not come in yet. They, they, they've promised they will come and help, but they have not come in yet. But we are doing our possible best to make sure that this thing stands. So exactly. that tomorrow, your child will benefit from it and now also benefit from it. Exactly. So basically, that is tourism aid. Ghana and tourism made global. Mm. So when you say tourism made global, we respond, we go global. We go global. When you say tourism made Ghana, we go Ghana. We go Ghana. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. What about the trip on the voter trip? That trip that we are all going. <laughs> we are all going to that trip. <laughs> it will interest you that I'm also from voter region. Oh. And that trip is Homecoming. one of the trip. Oh, it's one of the trip that is on my heart. Mm. And personally, I've been to the voter region to do all the research and put everything in place. The tour site that will be visiting are amazing tour sites. Okay. The hotel that will be lodging is an amazing hotel. And shout out to National Youth Authority. Okay. This time around, they've come openly that they want to partner with us wow. so that we get their program done. And uh, we, we thank them very much. The, the National Youth Authority in Ho, we are most grateful for your, your help and what you are going to do in the future. So National Youth Authority will be there. Wow. We are hoping Togba Afede will be there. We're wow. still making the arrangements to put him on board. We also have the uh, the district coordinator mm. and my, my father, uh, Dr. Lecha. Uh, yeah. He knows I'll be visiting him. Wow, yes. it's a serious lineup. Yes, yes, he knows I'll be visiting him concerning tourism aid Ghana launch in the voter region. So he should be expecting me <laughs> to be there. To be there. So the voter region is going to be massive. They're going to leave here Friday, very early, uh, Friday to Saturday dawn. That is around uh, four to leave Accra. Okay. And then uh, latest by uh, six, six thirty, seven. Then voter. Okay. They take their breakfast. They go and do the launch of tourism aid, uh, Ghana, voter regional block. Okay. Once they are done with the launch, the you know we have uh, the Miss Tourism voter. Mm. Uh, she happens to be our director or our uh, sector or voter regional coordinator. Okay. You understand? She is there and uh, she wants to do a donation on that day mm. to some of orphanage homes in Volta. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, so that's Friday, uh, Saturday after the launch. They will move straight away to go help her to do the launching and they'll come back and relax in a very powerful hotel. Sharp. Mm -hmm. Sharp. Sharp. Then Saturday, they con Sunday, they continue with their tour. Hey. That's where I love much. That's right. That's, that's where right. I love much. If you, if, you know if, the places. Have you already planned the places already? Well, you've planned the places already. Give me one. Give me one. Oh, they'll be going to the waterfalls. Oh, okay. They'll be going there. They'll be going I think to that's there. the largest waterfall in West yes. Africa. Yes. 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 Uh, it's not the largest. You know, still there has been this debate. 
but we'll leave that one for another time. Okay. Person, I uh, will talk about that. Mm. And uh, but it's a, I heard it's a very huge. It's very huge. Very huge. It's, it's bigger than huge. Boti. It's, it's bigger than Boti. Okay. And you know, <laughs> one of the challenges that Boti Force has, as compared to Willie, is that when it is in dry season, the Boti Force doesn't work. Mm. Yes. Try it and see. One day, when you're in the dry season, and we, we, sometimes I feel so embarrassed that can't we do something hmm. so that we can have water running 24 7. 7 but really it's not like that 24 like 7 is there 24 7 wow you understand mm. uh, they also go to the mystery stone that said uh, the mystery pot mystery pot yes uh, what's what's, what's, what's mysterious about the pot ah, my brother you like to you have to go there mm. you know, sometimes uh, when we are telling you the stories or the historical background of whatever happens there you'll be just hearing it within your mind mm. and your brain yes, but when you are stories. there and you are seeing it and you are telling the story you are feeling the, the, the i mean the the enthusiasm that is going on there mm. you understand mm -hmm. so uh, be there and i'm telling you that stories in made ghana they are they are fire they are throwing look just last two weeks ctf was in water mm. oh bernard Avils and co in water oh, okay they went to lunch visit water campaign <laughs> You see? I see. So you could see that the guys in tourism with Ghana, I salute them, they are doing mm. massive job. They are and spreading the fire around the country. They are spreading and everybody is now getting involved in it. So I will encourage anybody who wants to join that trip. It's a very nice fun trip. You learn, you get to know people, you get to connect with people and you will love it. If you want to see a proof, just go and watch our Northern Region trip. We are the only tourism fraternity that has gone for a trip with an helicopter. In Ghana here. Oh. Yes. We are the only tourism fraternity here in Ghana. I repeat it again. We went to Tamale with an aircraft. Wow. To do our tour. So that should tell you that we know where we are going and we know what we want for my life. That's a very serious. Yes. India Gokra. India Gokra. India Gokra. That's good, that's good. India, go, India, go, India, go. This water, we are all going. Yes. Would, the, would the helicopter be featuring? We are still talking to the Ghana Air Force. You let, know, we have one gentleman there mm. who is a brother to me. And uh, Kingsford Mensa, uh, he's doing a massive job. So that when you pay for their packages, it comes with their food, everything, accommodation, everything, your transport, everything. And you know something? Normally, we try to subsidize the cost. Okay. So people come and say, Ah, why is your price so small like that? Are you sure this book can make the trip? Mm, How are going to Tamale? They paid five hundred cities for three days mm, in Tamale with food, accommodation. We slept in the hotel. We slept in one of the best hotel. In Bali. Wow. We will pay Sans and Royal Lodge. Check and see. Wow. What's the name again? We will pay we will Sans pay. and Royal Lodge. Okay. One of the best hotel in the Bali district now. Wow. It's it's the hotel is like a tourist attraction site. Hmm. So I was even telling the manager that they should come to Ministry of Tourism and let them use that place as tourist attraction site. Hmm. You know, they have everything there. Wow. You understand? And people are wondering. How can you use five hundred to go to hmm. and then go the to use aircraft alone. and stuff? But we went, we are back. <laughs> you understand? So um, they are, they are doing very well. That's amazing. And uh, uh, I also want to. I don't know if you are ending. Or we'll be ending soon. A, they are getting close to the end. <laughs> Before we end, I yeah. want you to say something to young people out there. Uh, people, a lot of people have been discovered as discouraged. A lot of people they feel yeah. like. Uh, because what you are doing two things. First thing is that you are helping people to get a job to do, mm -hmm. and you are also helping promote Ghana. So yes. you are seeing both angles. Sure. There are some people, who, some people who feel like there's no hope in Ghana. Yes. Some people feel like they don't even have hope for themselves after COVID. In fact, the COVID crisis is not even over. We are, we are going through the COVID. <laughs> so I want you to say something to encourage your people. Uh, over there and also anybody who is watching don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell if you also know anybody who is doing something amazing in the community that you want us to feature on the channel just let us know click on the link below send us a whatsapp message and then uh, we will let you contact then if you also want to contact the also have any company named that their link will be below tourism in ghana is also below just go to the description click on it and you can contact them and let them know what you want from them they, do, they will handle you very well so Sadel, yes. say something to young people uh, one advice i would like to tell my fellow young people is that uh, there is no shortcuts in this world mm. and everything that you have to do 
you have to do it with boldness. Mm. You have to know how to take risks. Look, oftentimes, African youth blamed their concern on leadership. We know we have a poor leadership system. You understand? But we must also do something to help that poor leadership system to do what? To grow. Exactly. We should stop the comparison. Mm. The comparison will help at all. Oftentimes, when you speak to young people, people, my friend is in America, he's making it. Look, your destiny is different from your friend's destiny. Mm. What if your destiny is to help build Ghana? Mm. Even if you find yourself in America, you make nothing, you will come back. I know a, a Pentecost order in America for 10 years now without their documents. Mm. And I also know somebody who has gone to America within six months and he has his documents. <laughs> so you should know that it is not everybody that can go and seek for greener pastor. Mm. And often the when they are comparing Ghana to America, sometimes I laugh. <laughs> Four days ago, I was in a meeting. I was telling the director that uh, this guy was the name uh, Jonas. Yeah, Jonas, uh, Jonas. I was telling the director that <laughs> I don't think he knows his left and right. Mm. Seriously, because if he knows his left and right, you can't compare orange to apple. Yeah, we know our leaders are not doing the best, but they are trying their best, mm. and it is good for us as citizens to make sure that we put fire on their arms for them to work. Exactly. But it's also bad for us to sell our clubs. Eh, our debt is closed outside somewhere. Mm. Some of the things that we do discourage investors to come and invest in Ghana. Mm. We should look at that angle too. That's true. If you take America, let me just do a small education here. If you take America, America is built with 54 countries. My brother, can you compare a country built with 54 countries with a single country? No. So automatically what you are doing, for me personally, there is no sense inside. Mm. To me personally. A, a teacher can pass through a stage and become a headmaster. But it's hard for a headmaster to become a teacher, to mm. tell himself to be a teacher. Exactly. We have been we have been ruled by these people. They taught us how to eat and we are eating. Mm. And you can't compare yourself to someone who has taught you how to eat. Exactly. You can only try yourself to become like that person. But you cannot be like that person. Take for instance Messi and then Ronaldinho. Messi is at his best now. Yeah. But his skills cannot be compared to the skills where I didn't know to exhibit. They are different in all together. They are different entity all together. So sometimes uh, I tell the youth that don't let us be listening to those things on social media. They discourage a lot. Whatever he wants to do, start it now. And make sure you start it well. The beginning will not be easy. It is not easy. And the same way the ending will not be easy. <laughs> yes. Th that is the life we live in. Your beginning is not easy. Your end is not easy. Exactly. Because it's hard for you to just sleep and don't wake up. Mm. <laughs> they said you are gone. It's not easy. You understand? So let's put much effort. Let's, 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 you see, especially African youth. When I was at the African summit at DR Congo, I made something on stage that the African youth doesn't know how to volunteer. Mm. The African youth always want to get money from what he or she does. But when you go to Asia, the North America, the South America, they don't do that. Once the person is volunteering, he takes that as a lesson in a class. So the person begins to learn. Mm. First, if you come to Tourism Aid Ghana as a volunteer, and you are part of the media working group, once you begin coming for meetings and stuff, you begin to learn things from the professional that are in the system. But if you are asking what do I gain, or what, uh, how, what will I get from joining Tourism Aid Ghana, you fail yourself. Yeah. So let us not think about what we are going to gain now. But what we are going to gain to sustain us for the rest of our life. So let's look for sustainable volunteerism than short-term volunteerism. And we'll get there. Mm. Joshua, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's just a matter of time. Yes. And I believe we'll get there. So we, we are grateful for honoring our invitation mm -hmm. to come here. Mm -hmm. And like I said, uh, anybody that's watching, um, the social media handles will be there. If you want, follow us on, you can follow us on Facebook on Daily News Hive on Instagram on Daily News Hive. Then also our website is www.dailynewshive.com which is in the description. So all the links will be in the description. Just go there, go there and follow us. And also follow Dells Avenue, Tourism Aid Ghana. And we'll be expecting to see you in Volta region next month and we go there. So start packing your money. Put your 1-1 one, CDs, 2-2 <laughs> CDs, 3 CDs. Put everything together because next month, life in Khaled, we are all going to Volta region to go and Open Tourism Aid Volta, right? Yeah, Volta Block. Volta and also 
enjoy ourselves more. You have been working, so I have to come and relax. <laughs> Stress can kill. And yeah, you come and distress and relax. Tell your friends, tell your families, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your husbands, your wife. Tell everybody. Take your grandma that cry and bring her. She, she, she has to relax. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And to we come your, your, your way again the next time with another exciting video. See you. Have